Before a cross country race, it's always custom to walk the tracks. We were walking the course. We were talking and I felt a rock hit me in the back of the head. And once the rocket hit me and kind of people were reacting to it, the kid had said, what's the big deal? It's just that gay pussy fag kid. Homophobia in sport has, uh, is so pervasive, partly because sport has always been uh, a, a sort of a male domain. Hey coach, is Mickey Mouse here gonna live? Mickey Mouse. And I think sport has been perceived as sort of a place where men, in a way, learn to be masculine. When I was in seventh grade, people kind of harassed me when I was that young because I was more effeminate than most of the guys. And so kind of hearing people say, that's so gay and you're such a fag, made me think, well, actually, am I? Jacob's experience is not isolated. From playgrounds to sports teams, homophobia is unfortunately all too common according to GLSEN's 2009 National School Climate Survey. Some students are too scared to go to the gym. They see the locker room as such a scary place, they will skip gym or school altogether rather than have to go there. That's, a, that's an incredible, powerful statement. And the words used to taunt LGBT kids were broadcast on national TV in April 2011 for when Kobe Bryant screamed the F word at a referee. The count starts over. He's yelling at Benny. And at George Washington University, Kai Alums, the first transgender NCAA basketball player, reacted to Kobe's slur. I, mean, I was pissed because I love Kobe. That's like that's my dude, but <laughs> but then I, mean, I thought about it. Like it, that happens all the time. I mean, he he just so happened to get caught. I'm pretty sure there, there's probably not one NBA player who hasn't said it, faggot or gay or whatever. Sean Chapin of San Francisco was also watching. When I saw it happen, I was very upset by it. I went ahead and grabbed the video that was on YouTube, rehashed it with an LGBT message. It attracted a, a lot of attention and also attracted a lot of homophobic hatred. When a professional athlete says something homophobic or hurtful, it is empowering the kids that look up to them to say those homophobic and hurtful things. Words definitely matter. It's trickle-down homophobia that eventually gets into our schools. Then, two weeks after the Kobe incident, an Atlanta Braves coach was also caught yelling homophobic slurs at San Francisco Giants fans. At that point, Sean had had enough. So when I heard of Roger McDowell's homophobic comments at a Giants game, well, by that time, I already had the idea of asking the San Francisco Giants to make a Net Gets Better video. To the San Francisco Giants. Professional sports world cannot afford to fall behind the rest of the country. This is why I am calling on you and your players to produce a video for the It Gets Better project. Born in September 2010, when a string of LGBT teen suicides was making national news, the It Gets Better project has provided the LGBT and straight ally community a means through YouTube telling our youth that it gets better. Your fan, Sean Chapin. We love the video. I actually watched the video, it was about two in the morning. I immediately sent out an email to a number of people on the team saying, this is an amazing person. I don't know who Sean Chapin is, but we need to help. So Change.org is a platform where anyone, anywhere can sort of petition around any issue they care about. And we empower people through online tools to start effective campaigns. When they sent an email to their mass distribution list, and the next day we got 5,000, 6,000 signatures, I'm just, you know, my hair is raising just even saying this right now. Hi, I'm Barry Zito. We speak for the entire Giants organization when we say that there is no place in society for hatred and bullying against anyone. The fans are our biggest supporters here. We listen to what they say. It's something that you would want to have, you want to do out of your heart. It gets better. It gets better. We're in the public view. People use us as role models, and I think it's only fitted to, you know, give something back. It doesn't matter your sexual orientation. Since then, the Boston Red Sox, Chicago Cubs, Minnesota Twins, and a growing list of other teams have made their own It Gets Better videos. The participation of sports teams in the It Gets Better project is a, an indication that we're reaching this cultural tipping point on LGBT issues. Folks are realizing that support for gay people, gay rights, that these things are mainstream values. Mainstream or not, it's going to take a concerted effort by all athletic teams to end homophobia in sports. And the one person who has been fighting for three decades for it to get better for LGBT athletes 
is retired University of Massachusetts professor Pat Griffin. Why don't you come on upstairs to my office? That's where most of my queer stuff is. Well, this is my autographed picture of Martina Navratilova. Here's my book, Strong Women, Deep Closets, Lesbians and Homophobia in Sport. I'm very proud of this book. I feel like it's made a difference. I am the project director for Changing the Game, the Glisten Sports Project. I've been working on LGBT issues in sport for over 30 years. This year, Glisten launched something called Changing the Game. The advisory panel is run by Pat Griffin, who is literally the godmother of all LGBT sports research. Changing the Game focuses on athletics and physical education in K-12 schools. Some of the most insidious types of homophobia start very, very, very young. And if we can work with youth leagues and youth teams and youth coaches and get them to recognize that in an environment that is welcoming and supportive is a winning environment. Our mission is to make sure that every school in the United States, their athletic programs, their physical education programs are based on the core values of respect, safety, and inclusion so that every student, regardless of their sexual orientation or their gender identity, can achieve their goals in athletics. And joining Pat in her fight for equality are two prominent straight allies, rugby star Ben Cohen and college wrestling champ Hudson Taylor, who have created their own organizations to end homophobia. We've got an event at Boxers tonight to support anti-bullying across the board, but specifically in the LGBT community. And um, the reception we've had has been amazing. To have athletes like Ben Cohen, who is a former professional athlete and who is heterosexual, or a Hudson Taylor or any of the other straight male athletes who have been speaking up, they get attention. And they're great role models for other straight athletes. For a long time, when I heard homophobic language used, it didn't affect me because I didn't have any out friends, I didn't have any out relatives. You know, as a college freshman, I actually started at the University of Maryland as a theater major. You know, once a month, I had a friend who would come out to the class and it would be a big celebration. And then to hear that homophobic language from my teammates is really the first turning point that encouraged me and inspired me to, to try to do something about it. As a captain of my wrestling team, as an All-American athlete, I felt that I was in a position to, to try to change the word choices of my teammates. Every week, I try to put out a video called the Allies Playbook. Every time we step out onto that field, we're standing up as leaders. And what I try to do is give athletes some proactive advice that they can follow, that they can take back to their athletic community, back to their teams, to try to make a, a difference. Up until today, there have been about 3,000 people who have signed the Athlete Ally Pledge. I think it's important for straight athletes to talk about uh, this taboo subject at time, gay athletes, uh, because it, it sparks a discussion. And I always hearken it back to uh, the Jackie Robinson era. You know, think about a time when African Americans weren't allowed to play sports simply because of the color of their skin. And think about the contributions that were missed then that are now capitalized on. It's the same thing with sexual orientation as it, as it was with skin color. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you're either a great athlete or you're not. While these athletes advocate for more straight allies to come out as supporters, Others, like photographer Jeff Shang, who created the Fearless exhibit, advocate for more LGBT visibility in sports. I majored in photography and filmmaking at Harvard and really wanted to make a project that had a lot of social impact. I emailed all my friends and said I want to um, photograph out LGBT athletes in high school and college. They thought I was crazy. My name's Ashley Gradwell and I'm a Division I field hockey player. Field hockey is played with this stick. This side you use, it's flat. We go over the ball to pull it and come like this. This would be a slap hit. I photographed Ashley for all the photo shoots that I make the athlete work out. And part of my goal is to capture them as an athlete. He portrays normal athletes, people, you know, no, everyday people who you wouldn't pick out as being gay. And that was something that like really inspired me because all of my teammates are so supportive. I wanted to be a part of that. I think it's her confidence. Like she's so confident in herself that she just seems like such a leader to us. 
I didn't really know. Like they, they just told me that she was gay, and it was just kind of cool that we had a, a lesbian teammate now. <laughs> and I like it. She's funny. She tells us everything we need to know. I think she's okay with talking about it. Like yeah. she's just she's willing to answer our questions when we have questions, which is every day. <laughs> like what, do, what kind of questions do you ask? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Anything inappropriate you can think about for a lesbian. That's what we ask. Kai is another athlete who will be featured in an upcoming installment of Fearless. Kai's photo shoot happened late last year. I had him shoot hoops for about an hour. I definitely want to educate others because a lot of people know nothing about trans anything, and there's a lot of misconceptions. One way to fight all misconceptions of LGBT athletes is for more gay professional athletes to come out as well. There are currently no out Major League athletes in the U.S., but former Washington Redskins teammate Wade Davis feels that needs to change. It's important for gay athletes to come out to show other youth and show other young people that who they are is fine, who they are is normal. I think a lot of times when you're a young gay person, you really question your validity on this earth. It's a lot to ask, but coming out is the best thing you can do for kids. There are kids who look up to professional sports and when they don't see anyone who's out, it's hard for them to imagine themselves there. There's something that everyone can do, whether you are a graduate of a high school or whether you're a student or a parent and you have students in a school. Find out what's going on in that school. Teachers and coaches need awareness, they need strategies to protect students. No one should come on a sports team and feel like they're being targeted for who they are. So after being attacked by a teammate, does Jacob still feel targeted in school? The next day, when we all came to practice, when this kid came in, the rest of the team booed him. And then the coach said he would do anything to help me. The school came forward and said that they would support me. I think it is growing, uh, acceptance of great gay athletes, mainly because this topic has become national. The message is simple. Accept and talk and think before you act. Because once you act, you can't take it back. I often describe the work of addressing LGBT issues in sport as a relay race. You know, I've got my leg. I received the baton from some women and men who ran the race the leg ahead of me. So I'm grateful for all the young people who are stepping up and are willing to take this on and take it to the next level. It's like taking the baton and passing it on to the next generation so they can run the best race of their life. <laughs>